Okay. This is uh, lesson four, rapid Appli application development part two. Uh, we're talking decisions and conditions today. So again, I'd, I'd ask you as I'm doing this for the people here in class uh, to kind of pull up your um, uh, Visual Studio if you haven't done it already, and we're going to move forward with this thing. Okay, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about uh, logic flow, um, nested if statements. We're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Um, we're going to read and create um, diagrams to, to illustrate the logic in a selection process. And that's more of like these, um, who's actually done any kind of UML, like design work, right? And if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's really designing like you almost like your logic flow as opposed to, it's not just a picture of, um, you know, your wireframes, but sometimes what you're going to do is you're going to create this logic flow diagram, and you can do that with kind of a, uh, you know, a universal modeling, modeling language that you can use, and you can actually create almost like a clickable program um, that's not really actually any, there's no functionality, but you can do that with UML. So that's we're going to kind of skim that a little bit today. Um, we're going to evaluate some conditions. Remember that we're also going to talk about how we can combine conditions using, uh, using uh, uh, the double ampersand sign for and, the double pipe for or, and the single uh, 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 exclamation mark for not, right? Uh, we're going to test, you know, uh, how we're going to look at a check property of a radio button. How do we do that? How do we check the chest, uh, tech, uh, test the check property? We're going to perform some validation, right? Um, we're going to look about, instead of the case structure, actually this is wrong, it's not case, it's, uh, it's the, switch, uh, the switch statement. It's what happens when you convert things from uh, VB to, uh, uh, to C sharp. There is no case structure, it's actually the uh, uh, switch statement for multiple decisions, and I think it's a, I think it's a good uh, format. It creates a readable, uh, a set of readable code uh, readable conditions as opposed to if, else if, else if, else if, and nested else if. So you can actually, it's a good uh, format for that. And we'll look at that. Um, one event handler to respond to the events of multiple controls because you're going to need that when you do menus and other buttons. When you combine uh, the menu button or a button or some kind of uh, tab and it does all the same stuff. And you don't want to reuse, you don't want to rewrite that code over and over again. You want to reuse that code. How do we do that? Um, create message boxes with multiple buttons and more robust message boxes today. And we're going to talk about debugging a little bit in Visual Studio because some of you may not know or care to debug. You may just keep running it and you don't use the debug tools that are built in. We're going to talk about how to do that today. Okay. Here's this statements. And here's what we're talking about with this, you know, logic flow diagram, right? Um, so if else logic, um, really what we're, we're looking at is, you know, um, as an example, um, the sun is shining and you have this like kind of like decision box or the sun is not shining, right? And you draw this diagram that kind of tells you this is your flow of logic. This is perfectly acceptable to include in your documentation. If you were going to do that, like if you're going to create logic diagrams alongside your documentation with UML. Um, am I asking you to do that? Is it, you know, am I requiring it of you? No but I think it's perfectly fine, and you will see it in your, in your career. Um, so if true, only the statement following the if is executed. If false, only the statement following the else is executed. And if you don't know this kind of stuff and you're a programmer and you haven't come across if, else, if, uh, you know, a decision structure, something is not right, right, if you're here. Uh, you should already know this stuff. This is basics. So we're just looking at how it works from a C-sharp perspective in Visual Studio, right? So here's what it looks like. You've got your, the general form is if, the condition, and what I'd like to see. You don't need to put this in the structure, by the way, for uh, any C style language. If you don't have more than one statement under the if, you don't need the braces. I'm asking you to put the braces because it's good and it's best practices. Yeah, it's, and also, it prevents errors in the future. And the reason for that is if you don't put your braces now and you have only a single statement and then tomorrow you want to add another statement in there, and you put it somewhere next to the braces, it'll A, try and, it'll crap out on you, right? Or B, you won't, it won't do what you're thinking it should do because you haven't put it in the braces, right? You need to put multiple statements underneath that if condition inside the braces or only do the, the statement immediately following it, okay? So that's why it's good to start off with braces from the get-go. It's good programming practice. 
And like I mentioned before, even though it doesn't say it here, I recommend to you at the end of the brace for else or if to also put some doc, uh, comments that to basically say and if and else. Right? So you know what those, that and brace is for. Or else you're going to get a whole bunch of braces that are in your, going to be in your code that you're not going to know uh, what that brace is closing out. Which, which code block is it ending? All right. So I'm just going to move this screen a little closer. Oh, yeah. There we go. Perfect. Because that's the kind of guy that I am. Um, <clears throat> if, um, here's another if statement example. So you've got your unit decimal is your a decimal variable, and you're assigning it to the result from your decimal.parse function which changes your unit's text box dot text, the text value, the string value that's coming from your text box, changing it into decimal or converting it, right? And there's some loss. There's some loss. There's some stuff that won't be converted if it's a, if it's a non-number, a non-numeric string that you're trying to, to convert. It'll give you an error, right? Because now we're not checking to see if there's a problem here. We're not using a, uh, a try-catch block to do that here in this example. But uh, let's continue. If the unit's decimal is less than 32M, and again, just a refresher, M means it's a decimal. You're comparing it to the actual decimal amount, decimal amount of 32M. If you didn't put this M in there, what would happen? Anybody? So I'm comparing. I'm going, if unit's decimal is less than 32, would that work? Or would it error out? It would error out. In the current conditions of Visual Studio, you can make it so it doesn't, by the way. But it will error out because 32 is not a decimal. It is an integer. Right, and you're comparing a decimal to an integer. You can't do that in C sharp. You have to cast it, or you have to use the short form casting methodology, uh, the M, the small M or capital M, uh, to talk about what kind of unit it is. All right, or else it will give you a problem. Okay, and then you say freshman radio button dot check is equal to true. That's your that's what the, that's what the statement happens. It, it converts your checked radio button to true. Else, freshman radio button dot check is equal to false. So there's two conditions here, and you can see that if it's Units is greater than 32, or units are less than 32. Okay, so this, and this, this is the, your, your logic diagram down here. All right, let's chart them. And I said, if you use this uniform modeling language, and by the way, there's some plugins for Visual Studio that you can download and activate other parts of Visual Studio, uh, especially if you have some of the basic versions of Visual Studio that don't include UML, that um, allow you to create these diagrams from right within Visual Studio. Okay? Now, if you don't want to, you can also do it externally. You can do it with Visio. Um, there's other software out there uh, that you can use to create these flow charts. That's what they are, really, in some ways, flow chart. But like I said, it's built in um, to Visual Studio. And I'm not requiring it of you for your external documentation, but I think it's something you should learn how to do. So it can be used to help programmers organize their thoughts and design projects more quickly. I agree. It's, again, another way of sketching out your code before you've actually programmed anything out. You understand your conditions and decisions before you actually, actually uh, program anything at all. All right. Uh, we talked about IntelliSense and, and what you can do. And if actually, if you press, if you type an if statement and press enter, it's going to order, it's going to kind of give, give a bunch of options for you uh, what kind of if statement you wanna, uh, want to kind of pull up. And it'll actually do that for you if you check your if statement in Visual Studio. So if I go to my Visual Studio here, and I'm pulling up a, a, a new project, and I'll just call this for our, our purposes lesson four. <clears throat> Here we go. A blank form, and let's say, for example, um, I'm going to drag in a uh, a button, right? Because I like to do this like every time, right? Here we are. Here's my button, and again, uh, I'm going to label my button something you know neat, like for example, I'm going to make it exit. The button is going to be called exit, right? It's going to say exit in the text. And I'm also going to label this exit button. And I'm going to use the old way of doing it with, with a upper camel case, as opposed to camel case, which is acceptable for C style, um, C -style uh, variables. And I'm also going to change my form, because that's what I do. When I start my new project, I immediately change my form you know, to something that makes sense for my, my project, for, for, that, for that piece of uh, um, uh, what I'm working on, right? So I'm going to call this, you know, my exit form, right? It allows me to exit. And when I do that, Visual Studio will pop up a message that says, hey, you're renaming a file. Would you like me to basically reassociate your form 
so that now it recognizes exit form as the um, as a namespace? And the answer is yes. I want you to do that. So it redoes that. And I also want to change my form name, uh, form name itself. I want to change that to exit form as well. Exit. Maybe it just says exit on the top, right? Um, and then, you know what? I want my start position. As you can see, I'm making all these changes to the properties. This is the stuff that you would put in your, your external documentation. Um, I want to start the, you know, the start position at center screen. I want to test my form out. So here we go. And there it is. It kind, of, it kind of comes in the middle of my screen. It's pretty ugly. There's nothing on it right now. And you know what? It's pretty damn big for just an exit button. So let me move this exit button up here, right? And let's shrink the form down to here, right? Maybe even make it even smaller, like a little uh, uh, message box. And let's run that again. So now that I shrink this, this form, I need to know the size. These size requirements, these size requirements are going to be required in your external documentation because I've made my form smaller. I've changed the defaults, right? So I require you to put that in there. And then I run it, and then there we are. My form comes up in the middle of my screen. It doesn't do anything yet. That's an exit button. But if I go to the exit button itself and I double click on it, two things happen. It creates this exit button uh, stub <clears throat> for the method for my exit button, my event listener, or event handler, if you will. So if I start typing if, IntelliSense will come up with all these different options for my if statements, right? And I can choose. Um, None of the stuff that really makes sense uh, down here except for the if statement itself, right? So if I press enter, I just accept the if statement uh, as, as is, right? Um, you can turn off IntelliSense, and we'll talk about if and for loops and all that kind of stuff that we've done before. You can turn these things off and on if you really care to. I recommend you don't, but some people like IntelliSense and some people really hate it because they feel they're lazy programmers, like I said before. I don't recommend that, though. Let's leave it the way it is. It's errored out. I'm not really finished my form yet. Uh, but let's go back to the presentation and see uh, what it's going to ask us to do. So it does de definitely position braces in our form. So if I start typing the, the, the brace out, so if I type my, type my first brace, and I, I put my second brace in there and press Enter, right, it doesn't do anything, right, because I just type two braces next to each other, right? And the other thing is I don't have a true condition in here. So if I start typing my condition, like, for example, if I say, um, you know, my exit button is clicked, right? I want to check to see if my exit button is clicked. Or if I'm checking some other condition, um, you know, I, let's say my variable, my variable is equal to 25 M, let's just say, and not equal, sorry, double equal because I'm checking. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, uh, comparing the condition here. Let's just say my variable doesn't exist right now, but let's just say it does. And I've kind of put the, my, my single brace there, and I put my second brace here. It's going to actually move and reformat my braces so they're underneath each other. And again, you can change this as part of your editor defaults so that it doesn't do that, right? Or it does it in a different way. It keeps the brace on the right side if that's what you're used to, right? But this is what it normally does. And from here, what I should do, again, writing proper if statements, is kind of put and if. I should probably do that, right? So that way I know what that brace is. And if being a good programmer, I probably should do, you know, and exit button. And again, you don't have to do it like this, but, you know, something like that. And I probably, you know, inside my code or the, before my code starts, like maybe here, uh, before the exit button, say, you know, uh, method or uh, event handler, you know, as an example, exit button. That's what I should do when I start doing my internal documentation, right? And then what does this event handler do? Uh, purpose, something like this, handles uh, <clears throat> click events uh, <clears throat> from the uh, exit button on the main form or whatever. Something makes sense, right? So I'm kind of documenting my, my header for the button here. I'm kind of putting these together. And I've got my, my variable, which doesn't exist yet. Um, but I could actually declare it here. It doesn't make any sense. Let's say my variable. And I want to uh, declare it. I want to cast it as, a, uh, as an int in this, in this particular case. So I'll say my variable here as a local declaration is equal to 0, right? And um, suddenly this, this area will disappear. And then, of course, I got to say, you know, uh, local variable uh, declarations. 
right? And then what's my variable? I probably should talk about what these things are if they make any sense. Okay, so I've kind of put together a stub for my my exit button. It's overkill at this point. I mean, I really don't need an if statement here to see if my um, it works. But if it, if it is equal to uh, 25M, maybe what I want to do is I want to change the label that I don't have in place. But what if it isn't? Well, then I want to put in my else statement, right? So else. And again, I want to put in my uh, my little brackets here, uh, my braces. And else, well, what I want to change, I want to change this to that so that it, it closes the form. It closes the form out, right? That's what I want it to do. So if it's not 25M, and it's never going to be 25M because it's an integer, not a ver uh, not a, uh, a decimal, um, <clears throat> it's never going to ever do the stuff in the if statement, right? And here's the other problem. Some people said to me, well, look, Tom, you've asked us to put this decimal or int or something at the end of my of my variable, and I don't I can't find that form anywhere. I don't know where you got that from, Tom. Right? It doesn't say anywhere that there's a there's a some kind of um, uh, best practice that makes us put the the type of of or the data type along with our variable. Well, here's a pure example of why that would be good. I've created my variable, and here I'm comparing it to 25m, which is technically correct. But it will never be equal to 25M because what M does is it casts this as a decimal and it'll, it'll, it could error out on you, right? So this is where it becomes a cool practice, a good practice to kind of put in here integer, right? And so I know when I get here and I start uh, uh, doing comparisons, I don't need the M, right? I'm not going to have that error happen to me. I'm going to cut down on the amount of errors as I write, right? This is the reason why we do this, okay? Because so I know 25M isn't necessary and it might cause a problem probably will cause a problem, right, from a comparison perspective. Okay. So, again, a very stupid example, but um, what I'm trying to do here is give you some format for when you're doing your internal documentation as well. Okay. So, let's talk about these Boolean expressions anyway. Um, oh, did I skip a point? I did. I don't know why it says continued. But uh, let's – this – or conditions. Um, so the test in an if statement is called this Boolean expression. If you don't know what this is by now, again, as a programmer, I'm not going to teach it to you here. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're, we're using these relational operators, and C-sharp is called relational operators, and VB and other languages it might be called comparison operators. Uh, but here what we're going to be doing, we're comparing like types. That's what we need to do. Okay, so how do we do this? We have different kinds of relational operator here. Like, for example, a symbol might be a greater than or less than or a double equal, a not equal, and so on. These are the, the operators we use to check our logic, right? Now, if you ever take any kind of logic programming, uh, whether it's here, um, I'm not sure if you do logic math here in uh, a college level. A uh, university, we definitely had to take it. was one of the requirements to take logic. Um, and by the way, it was a brutal course, right? And the guy you know, who was teaching it was really, you know, hardly understandable. I think actually he was a robot teaching us, like, you know, the, uh, I'm telling you the truth. He was like this guy who was basically teaching us uh, um, you know, the, um, I didn't say that, I didn't say international pressure, I didn't say that, oh, wait, I just said it, and I'm recording it too, uh, but anyways, he was, a, he, was a, he was like a robot, this dude, and he was actually ta teaching us, like, you know, the, you know, uh, almost like the directives, the prime directives of a robot, you know, a robot will not harm a human, you know, that kind of thing, and I didn't understand it at the time what he meant, right, but then he would compare things, the set of all robots don't harm humans, right, and then if the robot's blue, I didn't say anything about that, so that can harm a human, because, you know, the robot's blue. Um, anyways, what I'm saying here is these conditions are the same kind of conditions that work on basic logic op uh, operations, whether you do it and you're talking about, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, you're comparing one value to another, and this isn't comparing uh, situations or conditions. This is just talking about if the, if the value of an object is greater than or equal to or not equal to and so on. Um, so here's when we compare numeric variables and constants. So again, um, when numeric values are involved in a test, you know, an algeb algebraic comparison is made. In other words, the sign of the number is taken into account. For example, negative 20 is less than 10 and so on. These are regular things that you would think people would know, but some people don't take that into account, right? So here's an example. If decimal.parse, and we're, we're parsing this price text box, right, is equal to, so we're, we're checking, we're not assigning, equal to the maximum decimal value, if that's true, then this condition is, is true, the whole condition is true, and we can get on with our life. And by the way, there's an error in this statement. It shouldn't be written this way. Oh, no, it is. No, no, it's right. It's correct. 
Um, okay, let's continue. So there's an extra bracket. Um, you can also compare character data, right? You can look at a character, uh, a, a char variable, if you call it, or a car variable. People just call it different way, uh, names. Uh, they, can hold, they only hold a single character, and you can actually use um, the, their value in ANSI, American National Standards Institute code, the code for ANSI, to compare uh, uh, characters in, uh, in C Sharp and other languages that are .NET compatible. And C Sharp stores that character in like the 16-bit Unicode uh, functionality, and I'll show you what it looks like. So here are some codes for uh, basics. Like if you look at uh, the value of a capital A, and this, by the way, is like, I've been using this since I was 10, right? Seriously, right? 65 is the code for an A, and it's always been the, the, the value for an A. And it's always going to be the value for an A, as long as people use the ANSI standard um, a collating sequence. Okay, so I kind of put this in, in, your, in your documentation here for you. So you can actually compare operators, uh, compare uh, uh, character values, as well as uh, the, what the string comparisons are. Okay, so when you compare strings, you can do the same thing. You can say you can use the equal and not equal to compare string sizes. And all they're going to do is going to take the string, and as soon as there is a difference, it's going to go one character at a time, starting in the leftmost character, and it's going to keep on checking the string to see if all the characters match. And, and same thing with uh, upper and lower case. Every character in the string is going to be compared uh, you know, numerically, if you will. And then it's going to come to a point where the string's not equal, and it's going to crap out, and it's going to say no not equal. And that's how string comparisons work. It goes one, up, one character at a time, starting from the leftmost character. All right. And here's another way you can do it. You can use the compare to method um, that's part of every string to compare one string to another. And the way you would do it is you say, well, if A string would be the actual string you're comparing to, compare to B string, right? If it's equal to zero, because there's three options, you can have um, if the two strings are equal, then the method returns a zero. When A string is greater than B string, you get a positive number, and when uh, you get a negative number when B string is greater than A string. So you can check for positives or negatives, so greater than or equal to greater than zero, less than zero. You can do that here as, a, as an alternative method to checking strings. Yeah? Uh, quick question. Um, depending, like, is, with this language here, does it do um, binary comparison? You can. Um, in your indicated zero is false, one is true? Yes. It automatically will recognize that? Yes. Um, in that case, then, does it also work with, because I know PHP, um, zero is false. false. Everything else is true. 0 0.1 will actually equate to, to, to true. No, don't assume that. Okay. That's what I was wondering, because I know PHP does that. No. So I wasn't sure if you guys No, are. don't don't assume it. That's what I'm saying. I would, I would, I would rather you not assume anything when you program, right? Okay. I'd rather you be absolutely sure what you're testing for. Right, so that there's no chance for error. Okay, no, no chance for, and especially if right now it works, then maybe later versions of C Sharp will be more strict, right? And so then your code won't be future compatible, right? So don't assume anything is my, my answer. Um, and I, I think that's a standard answer that I would say for anybody who's coding, right? Always make so your code is future proof, right? And make it so it's explicit in what it does. Have more control as opposed to less control. It's always better. More involved though. It's, more, it's a little more challenging. Okay. Uh, testing for true or false. So here's an example of it. Uh, if blue radio button dot checked equal to true, okay, is equivalent to if blue radio button dot checked. Okay, so this is basically saying if this thing is checked, right? Well, it's the same as saying this. You're saying it twice, actually. If you're saying if blue radio button dot checked, that's true, right? If it's true that it's checked, then it's true. Yes, we know it's true, right? So that's why this is okay. This form here is fine. All right. If I was to see this in your code and you didn't put if radio blue radio button dot checks equal to true, it'd be just they're equivalent. Okay. And I actually I prefer this one. Right. It's it's shorter. You don't have to put is equal to true. Right. Um, Lowercase and upper uh, uppercase. You can actually convert to upper. Like for example, here's a great example of this. Um, Let's say you want the user to enter their name, but you want to convert their name to upper, uppercase characters. You want to convert, you want to ask a yes or no question, like, you know, uh, do you accept yes or no? And they put a, uh, you know, maybe they put a lowercase yes, or a Y, or a capital Y. You know, you don't know how they're going to enter their, uh, um, their character. You can convert whatever they put to uppercase, right? So it doesn't matter what they answer, yes, lowercase, or yes, uppercase, or Y, or, or you know, whatever. You only care about the first character. You don't care about the, the Y-E-S, or the N, 
for NO, if you, if you want to do that, and you're going to convert it to uppercase, and you're going to, you're going to take it, you're going to convert it to the, to the format that you need. Right? And if it's something else, if it's not a Y or an N, you're not going to accept that input. You can do that too, with validation. Okay. Um, and this is the way you do that when you convert from lowercase to uppercase and so on. Okay, compound Boolean expressions. This is where people get messed up with, uh, with C sharp, so listen up. Okay? You do not use or, the actual keyword or, and, or not. You don't use them in C sharp. Okay? In other la C cell languages, you may see that. You put and, or, or not, right? But it doesn't work like that in uh, JavaScript, and it doesn't work like that here in C sharp and in other languages. You need to use you know, the double pipe characters, right? Or the double ampersand, or the uh, um, apost uh, sorry, uh, exclamation mark for your comparison, your uh, operators, right? Your logical operators. So what I mean here is, this is or. So it says, if one expression or both expressions are true, and this is where that robot professor was, was just making me crazy, right? If it's true that all boys wear blue shirts, and I couldn't understand what he was saying, right? And I'm not trying to make fun. That's how it really sounded. Uh, and I couldn't understand him. I was just putting my hand up all the time trying to understand this guy, right? We didn't have YouTube at the time either. Um, so, you know, he's comparing true. If it's true, if one, uh, ob if you're comparing it using an, uh, an OR operator, right? By the way, what's, what's an OR called from a circuit perspective? Come on, guys. Huh? Short circuit. Short circuit. Yeah. That's exclusive OR. But what's an OR called? Right? It's an OR gate. Right, remember? What's the OR gate? It's, a, it's an actual gate that gives either one or the other. One of those, if one of those, your one or the other one is on, right, then it's going to work. Your circuit's going to work. Either one. Either switch. If you're switched on either side, it's going to work. That's what an OR is, right? The AND, right, that's the AND gate. That means both of the multi switches have to be on, right, in a circuit diagram in order for this, you know, the circuit to be functional. Right? Because you have to turn them both on. Right? And the not means that whatever I get, whatever the result is of my check, reverse it. So if it's a true, on, it's going to turn off. It's if it's off, it's going to turn on. And a great example of that is if I have a uh, switch, a light switch, right? and I turn it on over here, and then I have another light switch at the other end of the room, and I, I click it again, it'll say, well, whatever that other light switch is, turn, you know, reverse the, uh, uh, the result and turn it off. Right? So that's what really the not is for. And this is the standard stuff. And you can create very complex um, comparisons with uh, and, or, and not. Very complex, right? Be careful. Be careful. Because remember, a lot of times the first operator you're comparing to, for example, I have a variable, and I say, in this particular case, uh, if number label dot text is equal to one, right? And or, if I put the or in there, that means I don't care what comes after. Right? Because if one of them is okay, then both of them are okay. Right? If it's either or is on. Right? Then I don't care about checking the second one. Right? If I have the and uh, comparison operator, though, then I need, them, I need to check both of them. Because if one is, actually, it's, it's the same case. Right? I only need to go to the second stage to check the second one if I know the first one is on. If the first one is off, I don't need to check the second one because the first one is off, and I need both of them to be on or true in order for me for that case to be uh, uh, correct for an and comparison, right? So there's some, some things that happen uh, in code that you don't realize uh, that, that kind of happen automatically. So here's an example. So if mail ra radio button dot checked and, and if you notice the brackets, there's no, you could theoretically put brackets here too, uh, but and int dot parse age text box dot text is less than 21, right? So you're comparing, you're integer parsing, and you're comparing with an integer. This is okay, right? And you're also checking to see if my mail radio button is checked. Well, what happens if this is false? Uh, short it short circuits, right? Because you don't need to check. If you know there's an and here, and if this is false, right, then you don't have to check this int dot parse h text box less than 21. You don't care about it. But what if you really want to care? What if you want to check this condition anyway, right? But you can do that, right? So let's take a look at further down. Here's somewhere you combine logical operators, where you can combine AND or an OR and so on. Um, I'm not going to go into that too much. But here's some short circuit operations, right? Um, when you want to absolutely compare the second value, let's go back for a second. So you're, you're evaluating compound Boolean expression. And like I said, this, the second expression is never evaluated. 
And if a compound expression has an or, like double pipe, and the first expression evaluates true, then there's no reason to evaluate the second one, right? So, and the same thing with an and, like we just talked about. And uh, most of the time you don't care, right? But what if you do care? Like, for example, in this particular case, this balance decimal plus plus, right? As an example, you want to do this operation. It's not a comparison. You're saying if amount integers is greater than zero and you increment balance decimal plus plus, right, as an example, and is that this balance decimal plus plus is less than the limit decimal, right? So you're comparing this, which is going to increment. You're never going to increment this thing, ever. Not that you would ever program this way, but let's just say, right? But what if you wanted to increment? Well, you can use this single um, and the single ampersand or the single or uh, for or the pipe for the or to make sure that the second expression is also evaluated. Okay, this is important because you might need the second expression to be evaluated uh, in your code. Chances are you won't. Is showing that the single uh, or is the short circuit one and the double is forced? Yes. So, oh, okay. so that, that is oh, that's oh, oh, sorry, that's it was reversed. Sorry, that's that's okay, that's incorrect. That, oh. Yeah, sorry, sorry. This this diagram is incorrect. It should be the other way around. It should be the and. I, I might I might have typed it wrong. This and has to go here, and this double and. Thank you. It goes over here. Right. This is the regular oh, it would be, one. Shouldn't it be the double and is the short circuit? No. And then the regular the regular and is the double and percent. Right. So that's that's over here, and the short circuit is the one where you make sure the other one is always checked. The second one is always checked. Okay. Short circuit operation. Oh, short circuit operation is okay. The opposite way. Of yeah. Short circuit operation yeah. forces it. Yes. Yeah. This, well, no, that's right. Because he's saying. Uh, right. The regular the one. Yeah. The double uh, end. Yeah. This double end should dub. It should be the other way around. Right. It's just like this, like, like it is here. Right. See this this thing? Oh no no. Are you following what I'm saying now? No. Actually, this is right and this is wrong. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're starting to confuse. Yes. No, I'm what? confused too. I've lost. Back here, back here. What he's talking about is, sorry for the guys watching the video. He's saying, this is correct. This is like the short circuit, and this is the regular. Uh, it forces the comparison to occur here. And if you use the double pipe, this, this, these, this symbol here and this symbol here should be reversed. That's all. Okay. Nested ifs. So we've gone and done uh, regular if statements and some comparisons. Now we're going to talk about nested ifs. Um, sometimes you're going to have more complex conditions where you need to nest your ifs, right? And sometimes from a clarity perspective also, you could do a compound uh, comparison. Like if this condition is less than this one and this condition is less than this one and this one is that, and you can do it all on one line. Or instead of doing it that way, you could do it so that it's, in, it's um, encased uh, inside a nested if, which is exactly the same thing that you're doing. You're just going to say something like um, if temp, in temp integer in this particular case is greater than 32 Fahrenheit, right? Uh, then I want to check if my temp integer is greater than 80. And if it is, then I want to make my comment text label say hot. Else, and by the way, this should be all indented here properly. Else, if uh, my comment label.txt is equal to moderate, right? And then here's the other else, the outside else. That's why it's important for us to, and this, by the way, this, this is actually should be reversed here. See the, uh, <clears throat> sometimes you do, as professors, you do this stuff in, you know, late, late at night. Not that it's an excuse or anything. Okay, it's an excuse. So this is actually something that should be encased and moved over. And I'll just do that here on the video, just because. And then this should say, and if, right? And over here, this should say, and else, right? Because we want to, to, you know, to kind of modify that. And here's another and else. Because you can see clearly now that there is a nested if statement inside another if statement, right? Okay, here we go. So greater than 32. So again, you're checking to say, well, we know it's hot, right? And if it's not this, then, well, you know, it's freezing because we know it's less than 32. Anything less than 32, they consider freezing. Okay. Fahrenheit. I really hope it's Fahrenheit. It's <laughs> Fahrenheit. Very, uh, <clears throat> Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. Well, definitely not yourself. <laughs> That's right. If it's Kelvin, then I'll be impressed. Kelvin would be awesome. But no, we're not talking about Kelvin, then we'd be dead. All right. <laughs> Using if statements with radio buttons and checkboxes, uh, let's take a look at this. This is actually really important. Again, I haven't really indented. In this particular case, I really don't need to. Um, so let's say I have a bunch of different if statements 
a different radio box. I have a, a beige radio box. I have a blue radio box. I have a yellow one and a gray one. And I want to check which one is checked. Well, I can say, well, if the beige one is checked, then do this. Otherwise, you can check if the blue radio button is checked, then do this, and so on, right? And set the color, back color of the form. This is when you say this dot back color. That's the back color of the form to whatever the color is that you're that is checked. This is definitely a way you could do it, but I think the better way is to use our um, our switch statement. And we're going to get to that. Um, here's another example. Um, so, you know, a nested if statement, right? So if fresh radio button dot checked is true, right? Then I want to increment my counter plus plus. Else, if my sophomore radio button dot checked is true. Right then, I want to increase my sophomore counter. I want to check how many uh, sophomores or freshmen there are in, in uh, American universities or colleges. Right, and then else if uh, our junior radio button is checked, well then you know increment the uh, the uh, uh, this uh, in, uh, 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 integer as well. And else if the senior radio button is checked, well then you know do that. So this is if else if else if else if, and I keep doing that over and over again. So I increment only one of the counters, not all of them. Right? Okay. Let's look at uh, uh, message boxes a little bit more carefully here. So lesson three, we learned how to do a message box, and now we're going to learn how to do some more advanced stuff um, in the message box. So let's take a look at that uh, in, more com uh, in a more complete format. So here we go. Our, we're, we're declaring a string in this example. Uh, it's called message string, and it's equal to uh, total sales plus my total sales uh, decimal, total decimal sales. Actually, should I say, it should say total sales decimal. But anyways, let's just change that now because of my late night partying. Like I party a lot. Total sales decimal. I should say not total decimal sales. Total sales decimal is two string, and I want to I want to I want to kind of convert the output to um, uh, uh, currency, right? And by the way, uh, someone asked. Uh, earlier, and I guess he's not here today, uh, but you kind of said, one, the question was, can you use, uh, I don't know if, who was that, that asked us, we actually, they asked us, what if I, what if I, if I'm, um, I'm, I'm in Europe, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm converting from Spanish to English to Spanish, and I want my, should my currency be converted too, right? And the answer is yes, it should be, right? So I haven't talked about how to do it, right? Because for your assignment number one I'm talking about, you're converting your language, right? It should say euros, right, instead of dollars. Because now you're converting. If you're actually, you know, if you're Spanish, you know, as an example, uh, assuming that you're not in Mexico, right, then it should be uh, euros, right? So how do you change your currency to another value? Do you know? Anyone come up with a solution? Yes? Uh, there's a default function that you can set the... Um, currency to? Literal? Your region type thing, and it, you can set it to like uh, English. Like I was doing like Canadian, so I was doing French Canada right. and, Eng and English Canadian, and it automatically, because I mean, in, in uh, Quebec, there is no period for a decimal, but you right. have a comma, so right, right. you have to convert it to that numerical system. But what about for Europe? It has the same thing. You just pick out whatever language region you want. And but is it for one? And it converts to everything like that, or is, can you switch between the two? Um, you can, I was flipping it back and forth. Good. You can take it, but you have to do a bit of fancy footwork because you're taking it back and forth. But. Okay. So, so there's fancy footwork involved. What if, what, and this is the question I have for you, what if you don't want to do standard formatting like this? You'd have to write some other code, right? You don't have to use the built-in formatting, right? You could fool around with a string. You know, if you, want an, if you want a euro, right, instead of a dollar, don't use the C. And this is where a great, uh, an option for you to put an if statement in there saying, if the language is English, then you do use this, this uh, uh, command, right, which is string, message, string, whatever's total sales plus the C. Otherwise, if the message is in English, you know, whatever else, then you're going to format the string manually yourself because maybe that's easier to do than switching back and forth your, uh, your defaults, right, as equal to, and you, and you put the, uh, you know, the euro, uh, in, and you kind of load the euro in the front of, the, uh, um, of your values. But also, if you think about this, if we, if we actually go there and actually convert it to euros, then you're going to have to kind of know the value of the euro, won't you? Yeah, yeah that is the thing you have to have on a floating scale. Right. Those euro changes in the 
the euro changes. So how are you going to do that? Now, I haven't asked for all these things, these fancy little things for your code, but these are all problems that you, you could probably make up on your own and go, did Tom really want me to, to put all that together and change the euros? And the answer is, I don't expect it, but it'd be really cool, right? And it's a great thing for you guys to do great exercise. Um, <clears throat> so here's so here's the message string, and I've comp it's a compound uh, message string. So I've got I've kind of concatenated this this uh, sales decimal to the mess to the string itself, from my message box dot show, and what I'm doing here is I'm saying okay, uh, take my message string, I'm gonna I'm gonna output that as the as the message. Here's my my title bar, right? Sales summary, and then I want to include this message box buttons dot okay the OK button as, uh, as part of my, um, uh, of my message box, right? And then, again, if I want multiple lines of output in the message box, what I could do is I could make a compound string, and what I want to do is I want to add this, um, you know, control character or escape character, if you will. Uh, I want to add that into the string, and, and this is pretty standard C-style stuff. There's a bunch of different escape characters you can use to format your string for your message box output so that there's more than one line that's output. And that's what I'm getting at here. Yes? I have a question about the arrow. Do you have any connections to the end map to always try to Yes, you probably would have to. But worst case scenario for the app, right, if you said um, last updated blah, right, so you, when you're connected, you updated this last update. Well, you could, you could simulate that you had connected to the Internet, and I'd be okay with that, okay? Because you know, again, I don't. I never said anywhere in the in the app you have to be. It has to be a web connected app or anything like that, or using any kind of web services. I've never said that, right? So I don't expect it from you. And honestly, it's quite advanced stuff. Um, and it would. It's been a lot of your time spinning your wheels trying to get that going, which is outside of our kind of a, the scope of what we're doing here. But cool, nevertheless. I think it's a great cool. If you want to explore that on your own, I think it's a great thing to do, right? Um, okay. So um, here's you can display multiple buttons, right? And again, if uh, IntelliSense kind of comes up with a bunch of different options for your uh, for the type of buttons that you can have in your form and your message box, right? So um, if I start typing message box, let me go back to you know to our our uh, Visual Studio here. So let's say if my variable integer is equal to 25, I want to get this message box happening, right? So I'm going to start typing message box. So I start typing message box, and I'm, you know, I got this thing right here happening, right? Message box dot show, and I start typing, and it automatically tells you from an IntelliSense perspective my general form. If I don't remember how to do message box, IntelliSense will help me build it, and it'll say, well, you know what? Um, I need a string. That's for sure. I need that to put in because that's going to be the text that I'm going to display in my message box. If you look also, there's these little control buttons here. Right, these little arrows, I can actually click on an arrow and it'll tell you. There's also, um, it displays a message box in front of the specified object and with the specified text, right? So you can do it this way. And there's different options for different message boxes that you want to, um, you can do. And it gives you different options um, right here built into IntelliSense and, and kind of tells you what's required. So this is what I really want. I want a, the string text, a string caption, and I want message box buttons, all right, because that's going to give me the button that I want, all right, if I don't know how to type this thing out. IntelliSense will actually skip through here and tell me how to do it, right? So let's try that out. So I want to say my string is what I want to show. It's going to be my variable, right? And then I want to compound it. I can do it here if I want, right? Or if I want to declare my string up here, here's uh, a string of my uh, message string. Here it is right here. I've declared my message string. It's right now it's empty. And what I want to do is going to say, list. I want to build my message string, right? So I want to say, well, you know, uh, my message string uh, is equal to uh, my variable. Actually, I should type in my variable. And then plus, I want to add in there my variable, right? My variable integer. But I got to convert this to string, right? So here's my two string comparison. 
and I don't care about comparing, uh, you know, changing it to anything else. Uh, as an example, if I just put this, would that suffice? Would, would intelligence int uh, accept this? And it is. It does. It just compares. It compares it to, you know, converts it to string, and I'm all good, right? And now I want to say, well, I want to put my message string in there. So that's my my string. Let's try that again. That didn't quite work. My message string. Here it is. So that's what I want to put in there. Comma, and uh, the 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 title of the text box. So you know. <clears throat> my ugly title, right? And then uh, message box buttons. I want, to I want to talk about the message box buttons that are available. So I choose the message box buttons. And if I go to the, uh, to the end of this line here, for you people online, if I hit the, the accessor, right, it's going to give me a list in IntelliSense of all the different types of message box buttons I can choose from, right? So I can choose, you know, the OK as an example. And that it'll add that in if I don't know what the options are, and I can end it off. And that little little thing is, if my variable is is equal to 25, which in this case it's not, then that that message box will come up. If it's not, it'll just close my functions. Let's run that. Let's see if it works. All right. So here it is. If I didn't make a mistake, um, it'll run my my code. Here it is. And if I click click exit, it's gone. Right. But let's say, for example my variable, I'm going to compare it, and I'm going to change my variable to 25 to test this out, right? Test my if statement out here. And if I run it now, and I try and exit it, and I click exit, well, you know what? It says my variable is equal to 25, and here's my ugly title, right? My little message box comes up, and it won't close ever my screen because now I've put it into that, um, I've put it in this condition where it says, basically, if my variable is equal to 25, well, guess what I want to do? I want to compare it, right? Here we go. I just want to pull this over here. I want to compare it to, uh, uh, I, want to, I, want to, I want to print out this little message box, right? All right. And that's what this is. IntelliSense will give you an option of what kind of buttons you want in your message box. Um, so, again, here's multiple buttons. And this would be message box buttons dot yes, no. That's this option, which will actually uh, display this standard set of buttons for people who haven't seen it before. Okay? And, uh, but what if I want to get, like, some kind of information from the buttons? I want to know which button's pressed. How do I do that, right? Well, I start off with my message string. So here's my message string. Um, and then I assign message box dot show is actually a method that returns the value, right? And it actually tells me which of the buttons it is that was returned, right? So I'd say, well, um, depending on which me message box is returned, I say if here's my return dialog result is equal to dialog result dot yes, right? So if it's the yes button that's being clicked, then I want to do this. If it's the no button that's being clicked, then I want to do something else. So this is where you can respond to a message box depending on the result, right? And this is how you would do that here in this on this code right here, All right? <clears throat> so again. Here's some uh, additional signatures for the message box dot show. Um, I think you could read this on your own. On your own, this is just from. A, I'm not going to talk about this um, in terms of how to do it. But there's some a general form for the message box. There's other options here. Um, you can actually have other message box options, like for example, uh, different icons and so on that are that are included, right? So there's stuff for different options there as well. Okay, we're going to pause it right here before we go into input validation.